Well, hello everybody. We're here doing live. I'm gonna adjust something here on the screen, but it's a good thing to see you guys. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Joyce. <laughs> Joyce is my buddy, so praise God. So anyways, mm, good afternoon. <laughs> Okay, so we talked yesterday about being in unity with your husband and about, hi, Deborah, and we talked about uh, women on um, doing the will of God the Father. So we also talked about, hi, Hazel, and we also talked about how to be in unity with your husband to be the army of God so that when we are in unity, you have your male you have your female, and when they come together, we have prayer, and your prayers are not hindered. So that's something that we talked about yesterday. But I wanna talk about something today that's gonna to be dealing with pretty powerful women on why it's a woman so important to God. Hi, Alex. Why is the woman very important to God? Um, those of you that are married, or those of you that are looking for a wife, you wait till God brings her, because that's what happened with Adam. God brought her. Um, even in a situation with me and my husband, God brought me to him. And I just want to read something on why it was so important for Jesus to appear first to a woman after he died, when he was resurrected. And it was a woman that he appeared to first. So this, I want to explain why this is important. And it's because when Eve was in the garden and God had given the, uh, the command to Adam and Eve. And when Eve was in the garden, what happened is um, she, whoa, hold on here. I'm going to have to go back. I think it's in here. Oh, I just changed something. Um, okay, I got it. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing my iPad. <laughs> so, Eve was in the garden. And what happened with Eve is that the devil, um, the serpent, he beguiled her and tricked her. And he said to her, did God really say that you would die if you ate this fruit? He was getting her to doubt what God's word had said. That's one of the main things that the devil tries to do with us is to get us to doubt God. And so we, and we don't want to doubt God because when God's word says it and he says something, it's true and it's truth. So also those of the men that are watching is that it said that Adam was with her. It said that in the, if you look in Genesis, it'll say that when she took the fruit and she took it and ate of it, she handed it to her husband who was with her. So he was with her. So, and then when he ate it, then everything happened. So I just want to show you something because don't you know that Eve carried that? Like, why did I listen to him? And even in our own life, sometimes as women, we might... Uh, say something like, why did I do this? Why did I listen to that? Why didn't I just listen to what God was trying to show me, the truth? Why did I make this mistake? You know, all of these different things. And as God's daughters, he wants us to be set free. So I want you to, to or I'm going into John 20. And I'm going to go to, um, this is really very cool. Mary Magdalene went with, um, not Mary the mother of Jesus, but Mary Magdalene went with the disciples. This is in John 20, verse um, 2. It says, Then she runs and comes to Simon to the other disciple, which Jesus loved, and said unto him, They have taken away our Lord out of the sepulchre. And we know not where they put him because the women went to go dress him to prepare his body. And she came running and said, they've taken him. Where did they take him? 
Hi, Kelly. And what happened is she went running to Simon and then the disciples went with her and they ran to the sepulcher. And it says that they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher and we don't know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and the other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter, that was John, and came first into the sepulcher and he stooped down and he's looking in and he saw linen clothes lying yet went he not in. He didn't go all the way in. He just saw the linen clothes lying there. Then came Peter, Simon Peter, following him and went into the sepulcher and seeth the linen clothes lying there also. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Now watch what's going to happen with Mary. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without the sepulcher. She stood on the outside of the tomb. And she wept. And she stooped down and she looked inside the sepulcher inside the tomb and they saw linen clothes guess what she gets to see and when she had thus said uh, she said oh wait wait I gotta go back but Mary stood without the sepulcher weeping and as she wept he she stooped down and looked inside the sepulcher and she saw two angels in white sitting the one at the head and the one at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. What does that remind you of? That reminds you of, hi Patricia, hi honey. That reminds you of the mercy seat. The mercy seat and the Ark of the Covenant where there's an angel at the foot and an angel at the feet. And that's what it reminds you of. And isn't that, praise God, the two angels, they were sitting, one at the head, the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Why are you crying? And she said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, and she knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Why are you crying? Who do you seek? And she supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, if you have carried him away, Please tell me where you laid him and I will take him away. She thought she was talking to the gardener. But let me tell you something. Remember, Eve was in a garden. And the gardener there, the real gardener, which was Father God, said, don't do it. And she did. But here's this second chance. Excuse me, second chance. Here's a time for the woman that God is saying, I'm going to redeem her. I'm going to redeem this woman. Jesus said unto her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned and she said in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. As soon as he said her name, and he said to her, Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brothers. He gave her a mission. 
Go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father. Do you know that Mary, that God said to her, Jesus said to her, he's your father too, Mary. I'm going, I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and that he had said these things to her. You know that she was given a commission. She was given a mission. First of all, and the reason this is so important regarding a woman being spoken to first was because of everything that had taken place in the garden. Women were not even counted in the census. Women or children, only the men. And so what has happened is that God was setting the woman free. He was saying, woman, I'm your God. Woman, I am your father. I'm going to your father. I'm giving you a commission. You are forgiven. You have a mission. Go to my brothers. Tell my brothers. Go to them. You know, we need to go to our brothers. We need to guard one another. Women can guard also. We may be a weaker vessel, but boy, we can make a connection with God. We may not be able to lift something as heavy as a man, but boy, we can lift up our brothers in prayer to God Almighty. We can lift them up. We can lift the body of Christ up. Women, you can connect into the spiritual realm with God. You can begin to see things in the spirit. You can come together in unity to guard each other's backs. We are going to be an army that has got everybody's back. We are not gonna stab nobody in the back. We are going to guard as with our backs. You know, they used to have these uh, foot soldiers and they would come and they would get and they would march together. And as they marched together, the backs were protected. Everybody had somebody else's back. That's what the Bible says, submitting yourselves one to another. You know, I have my husband's back. He has my back. I don't stab my husband in the back. He doesn't stab me in the back. We have the body of Christ. That's why the, the Bible talks about submitting to one another. That's why the, the word of God even talks about being in unity because we protect each other from who? The devil. We put on the whole armor of God all the time. Helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, shoes shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, <laughs> the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit. You have an armor. And we have Jesus, our rear guard. He is our rear guard. But we also need to have each other's back. We need to protect one another. We need to love one another. We need to correct one another whenever necessary. And we need to receive correction whenever necessary. Because God is raising up an army, a mighty army, not just to be here on this planet, but to be there. So, women, you are important to God. You have a commission. What is your commission? Go and tell them Jesus is risen from the dead. Go and tell them that they can have another chance. Why is it so important to tell women? You, you meet a prostitute and she thinks that this is it. This is her life. No, she can have another chance. She can walk with God. An abused woman, somebody that has been abused all her life or told she's ugly all her life, God says, no, you are beautiful. You have a second chance. You don't need to be abused anymore, women. 
anybody out there, send it to some of the women. Women, you don't have to rebel. You don't have to defend yourself. You have each other. And we also have men. Our, I, I love our church. I love my husband. He is such a defender of women. He is kind of like Moses. Moses defended the women at the well. Instead, he told them, let them water their sheep. As the, as the shepherds were coming in and they were telling them, no, no, you women need to get away. And Moses came in and he said, no, let the women water their sheep. You know that symbolic of God saying, let the women drink at the well also. Let them do the work that they are called to do. You know, I'm going to give you an example of something real quick here. I went to climb a wall. You know, those walls that they hook you in, the harnesses, and you climb this, this wall. It was an indoor climbing place. And I was talking to one of the guys there, and we had taken the youth group there. And he was telling me that women use their legs, and they push. And that's how they're able to get to the next level. They push up, and they get to the next level. And he said, but the men, they don't use their legs. They use their upper body strength and they pull themselves. So let me tell you what really hit me was as a full body of Christ, as an army of God, as the women push, the men pull. And one body working together can accomplish a lot. We can, because the Bible says you can leap over a wall. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can leap over a wall. You can run and not be weary. We have the strength of God. We have it. So God bless all of you. Yeah, I know, huh? Well, Alex, push and pull, huh? <laughs> yes, we have. The body of Christ can push and pull all at the same time. We'll get a lot accomplished. So praise God. We love you guys. Join me tomorrow at 1210 for a pretty powerful, and we're going to talk about some other awesome women in the Bible and how, how God uses men and women together. So God is a blessing. It is a blessing to be a woman. Be happy who you are. Women, you are a woman. And men, be happy you're men. So praise God because we can push and pull together. So God bless you. We love you in Jesus' name. And again, you can go to mfhlv.com and you can download any of the scriptures uh, that are there that are presented on Wednesdays and Sundays. And join us even tonight at 6.30 p.m. either on my father's house, Las Vegas Facebook, and watch as Pastor Jose brings forth the word of God tonight. And also, you can go to mfhlv.com and you can watch live on the internet. So join us tonight and you can give online at both places to donate to the work of the Lord. So we just want to thank you. God bless you and have a blessed day today. Mwah. Kisses to Jesus. <laughs>